Good afternoon, everyone. As a courtesy to your fellow media members, as well as the coaches and student athletes, please silence your cell phones. Please provide your name and media affiliation each time you ask a question during the press conferences. Please direct your question to a specific player or to coach. If you're joining us on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. Recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. This will be a 12 minute press conference. Joining us are the student athletes from San Diego State University, Jaden Ledee, Matt Bradley, and Micah Parrish, as well as head coach Brian Dutcher. At this time, we'll turn it over to Coach Dutcher for his comments on the game, and we'll follow up with questions for all. Coach? Well, first of all, congratulations to Pat Kelsey and Charleston. They had a great season. Uh, they're sitting where we were last year, disappointed. Uh, but they had an incredible season, and we knew what we were going to get into tonight. We knew they were wired like us, tough, physical. We knew it would be a battle. We respected the heck out of them, and that we played well enough to get a victory. And I've said this many times, we're one of the few teams in the country that when the offense isn't going, we can play defense and rebound well enough to stay in a game until we make timely shots. Matt made timely shots, Micah made a timely three, and we're very uh, happy to be moving forward in this event and we'll hopefully play better moving forward. I think no matter as much as you say, it's just another game of basketball, don't be nervous, be the best version of you. There are nerves that go into this tournament. I thought we were nervous at the start, but settled in and played a very solid basketball game. Questions? Row three, please. Matt, after the way things ended last season and the free throws, to come up so big on so many late possessions, what, how validating or, you know, is this moment? Yeah, it's a, it's a really big moment. Um, it feels good to have this win, and especially in a game like that where it was so tight and so close. And, um, you know, we've, we've been battle tested all season, you know, going to Maui, this Mountain West tournament. So just to be here on the biggest stage, uh, you know, we've been through it. So uh, I've been battle tested towards the ends of games, and so has my teammates. So I'm glad we pulled this one out. How confident in particularly are you with the ball when you're driving to the basket and trying to finish there? It seems like you did that over and over in this game. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a mental roller coaster uh, just my whole college career. But I feel like right now I'm in a good place mentally where, you know, late in the game, my, my teammates, my coaches trust me. And, I, and more, more importantly, I trust myself. So, um, yeah, I'm feeling really good right now. Row two, please. Name and affiliation, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Matt Marshall, the Orlando Sentinel. Brian, you, you talked about the toughness you guys were able to display moving forward with the, and going into the next round against a team like Furman, which is coming off an emotional win over Virginia. What, what do you expect to see from them? Well, we're a non-Power 5 school, and so are they. So we know respect is sometimes hard to come by. So we'll respect the heck out of them. We'll watch tape. We'll get ready to play like we're playing uh, the number one team in the country. We, pre we prepare hard. We respect everybody we play, and we will do the same for Furman when we see him on the court. Row three, please. Sorry, I forgot. Bryce Miller, San Diego Union Tribune. Jaden, you almost had an identical statistical game to the Mountain West Championship. At this point, where is your confidence level at compared to maybe earlier in the season when you were getting used to teammates and, and what they do here? I'm um, feeling good right now. Um, like we all, I think we're playing our best basketball right now. So when my team, my teammates are playing good, I'm feeling good, and I think we're gelling at the right time. How confident are you guys when Matt has the ball in those late game situations? Oh, very confident. I mean, yeah, Matt's our brother. So, I mean, Matt or anybody who got the ball, we, we got full confidence in them. They're going to do what they got to do to make the team win. Continue. I'll just keep going. Um, Micah, talk about you hadn't been that involved in the offense through the flow of the game early, but just the decision to take that critical three. I just try to take the open shots. Uh, I believe in my teammates. I feel like um, if you're open, the ball gonna come to you. So mm -hmm. when I when I got it, I knew I was open, so I shot it. I just think that the flow in the offense every every night might not be your night, so you just have to just continue working, do the best you can, just to be a good teammate. Just keep going. Matt, how do you continue to be so strong with the ball around the basket in those situations as you're finishing? Yeah. Um, you know, thank thank God, you know, thank my dad for, you know, building a strong frame on me. You know, we got some strong guys on the team. But the guy I was going against, he was even stronger. So to bump with him all night or all evening was pretty tough. But 
you know, I'm just, you got to be confident in those moments. You know, it's more mental than anything. So uh, just going in there, you know, not looking for the foul call, but trying to actually finish uh, is really big in those moments. So, yeah. Just keep going. <laughs> um, Matt, talk to about you guys saw what happened in the first game with Furman and Virginia, and you know very well in this tournament anything could happen. When that gets tight, one possession, tie game late, what's going through your head? Um, you know, I tonight was one of those, I mean, today's one of those games like Furman, like last year against Creighton, and like I said, we've been battle tested though. So uh, for us to be in this position right now, we had had a bunch of games, some losses, some wins that were just came down to the wire like that. But uh, I think we were under control for the most of the game. You know, we didn't lo really lose ourselves. We kept to ourselves and we trust our teammates and our coaches. So uh, when the game got tight, I don't think we got tight. I think we just wanted to win the game and that's what we did. Front row, thank you. Hey, uh, Mike Draco with ESPN. Coach, I think uh, Mountain West had lost, what, 11 straight NCAA tournament games. You snapped that streak. Were you aware of that? And it was that, is that something that's more of just one of those happenstance kind of things based on matchups? Everybody makes us aware of it, so yeah. <laughs> no, it, the thing that you can't lose sight of is every team and every season is different. You know, there is no history. This team is creating its own history right now. So there are some returning players off our last year's team that experienced some things that were disappointing. But you learn from that, and so uh, uh, we're not worried about past failures or successes. We're only focused on the moment, and that's how you win games. You're focused on the moment. You're not worried about the past. You're staying in the present, and that's what we're doing. Row three, right here. This is from uh, Andrew Miller from the Post and Curry in Charleston. This is from Mike or Matt. Uh, they're a very good three-point shooting team. What did you guys do to stop them from getting on, getting going in three-point line? Uh, yeah, we trusted our game plan, and the biggest thing was just boxing them out on the glass. You know, I think the first half they had one offensive rebound, but then the first three minutes of the second half they had five. So uh, we had to, you know, come together tightly and quickly in order to stop that. And I think we did a good job. You know, they hit some big shots, but I'm really proud of our guys and how we defended them. Uh, yeah, coming to the game, it was um, Coach Dave. He made a good point on how there was a good, great uh, three-point shooting team. So we just had to make sure we kept high hands and uh, kept our heels above the three-point line on every uh, closeout. So we had to, we really had to respect them, basically. Row three. Dutch, how much of this moment is kind of a chance to exhale? I know you guys say you don't look back, but there is that history, and, and you've kind of gotten over that hump now. Even the Mountain West Conference has had a, a tough run in recent years in this tournament, but you guys finally broke through. There has to be a little bit of relief in that. Not really. Every season is, is its own season, and so you can't obsess over that or you're just you're going to stress yourself. I told a story about when we won the national championship, Glenn Rice was sleeping on the training room table before the game. So I told him, if we play to Furman and I'm sleeping on the training room table, wake me up. So we're just trying to be relaxed, enjoy the moment, uh, uh, not make too big a deal of it. It's basketball. We have a good team. We want to play well. But we can't stress ourselves over what's happened in the past or, 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 or things that we can't control. We just are going to embrace the whole thing, have fun with it, and try to continue to win games. Right here. Uh, for all three players, just how good does this one feel? And just talk about the moment. Uh, feels good. Um, this is my first NCAA since my freshman year, so uh, it's been a minute, and it feels real good to get this win. And uh, but we're not done yet, and we gonna just get ready for the next game. Yeah, this feels really good. Uh, my first March Madness win, so uh, looking forward to many more, and you know, I'm really excited for our team. Uh, yeah, as well as my first win too. So uh, <laughs> I mean, just living in the moment, just just trying to stay present, really. Back row, please. Um, you guys, I saw you guys down in the corner. You saw, you're watching the end of the Furman uh, Virginia game. Just sort of a reminder of what can happen. You guys know from last year what can happen in these, in these tournaments. How much of that did, you know, going through your mind, like we're not going to have that kind of finish here and, and just let's close the door? Maybe you can start, Matt. Uh, yeah, like you said, uh, a lot of the guys that were here last year are here this year with the Creighton uh, situation. and. You know, it wasn't just some free throws. You know, we watched film and we're up nine with three minutes left. So, you know, we, we understand how important it is to close out games because in March Madness, anybody can win. Ranking doesn't matter, nothing matters. So, I mean, the hardest team's going to win, and that's what we did. And, you know, watching Furman game, I think that was a good thing to see right before we got on the court because it's like, 
you know, as much as good as Charleston is and as good as we think we are, it, it's up to anybody, you know, take the game. So I'm glad we saw that and, you know, we locked in for those final minutes. Additional questions for San Diego State. Back row again, please. Name and affiliation, please. Oh, sorry, Mark Ziegler, San Diego Union Tribune. Uh, Jaden, as the, as the game went on, particularly the first half went on, it, it became pretty clear they were having trouble guarding you. Do you what, what's your mindset there? Did you just think, you know, it's going to be bully ball from here on out? Um, yeah, I mean, I just thought, thought we could just wear them down on the inside. I mean, they were physical. They were a physical team. But, I mean, we got a lot of physical dudes as well, including me, A.G., Keyshawn, Nate. So, I mean, we just knew that eventually they would just wear down. Uh, Mark Siegler, San Diego Union Tribune again. Um, Matt, you go to the free throw line there. You went to the free throw line a couple times late last year. Um, any flashbacks? What was what was the mental thought process when you went, went to the line this year? Um, no, not flashbacks from last year, but mainly, you know, Colorado State, uh, Wyoming earlier in the season where I knocked down some big free throws and, you know, other, other times where I've hit big shots or big free throws in my career. So, you know, all the negativity and, you know, those – if you hold on to those, you're gonna, it's going to allow you to mess up your opportunity in front of you. So, you know, I'm just thinking positive things, and I, I'm looking at the bench, and everybody's trusting me now. There's no, you know, nobody side-eyeing, or you know, I think I have full trust in my teammates and my coaches mm -hmm. on making that free throw. So, uh, yeah, I felt really good. And, Micah, you hit a huge shot. You hadn't had a great shooting night. Um, just what did you see there, and, and, and what gives you that confidence to step up and just take that shot? Well, I think I'm a – well, I know I'm a confident shooter. Uh, I feel like every shot I take, I'm going to make. Um, so when I seen I was open, I shot it. So <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> that's nothing. I don't really overthink it. Uh, each shot I take, I don't think about the last shot I missed or the last shot I made. So Every shot he takes, I think, is going in. So I want him to keep shooting when he's open. One minute remaining. Final questions for San Diego State. Back, please. I'll ask another one. Um, Matt, again, you guys saw Furman. What are your thoughts on, on playing Furman? And, and uh, obviously, it's, it's not Virginia. It's not a high seed. Uh, but, you know, they got some of that March Madness magic going on. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, they're a really good team for what I've seen. And, you know, uh, they have a really good offense. But, you know, we're dogs like them. We're not no high major school. You know, we got a chip on our shoulder. And we came here to have magic, too. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to that matchup. And, we're both going to play hard, and we want to get it just as bad as they do. Mm -hmm. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub. That's at ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts will be provided by ASAP, and those will be posted shortly. Thank you. Coming up in just a few minutes will be the College of Charleston. Okay, once again, good afternoon. 
Uh, as a courtesy to our fellow media members, as well as the coaches and student athletes, please silence your cell phones. And again, please provide your name and media affiliation each time you ask a question during the press conference. That's for the transcript purposes. Please direct your question to a specific player or to coach. And if you're joining us on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. Recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. This will be a 10 minute press conference. Joining us are the student athletes from the College of Charleston, Ante Berzovich and Ryan Larson, as well as head coach Pat Kelsey. At this time, we'll turn it over to Coach Kelsey for his comments on the game, and we'll follow up with questions for all. Coach? Yeah, I'd like to first recognize Brian and his team at San Diego State. Uh, watching tape on them over the last several days, I uh, have unbelievable respect for uh, their program, first of all, um, the way they play, how they play. I mentioned it the other day in the press conference that they hang their hat, pride themselves on a lot of the same things that we do, and that's toughness, tenacity. They're a strong physical team, um, one of the best defensive teams in the country. And um, they were the better team tonight, made plays down the stretch. Can't be prouder of our team. Uh, I read off a list of accolades of this team, which is amongst the greatest in the history of our program. Um, whether it's the Charleston Classic, CAA regular, sa regular season, CAA tournament, 20-game winning streak, top 25, another 10-game winning streak, that's hard to do. You go into gymnasiums on the road with a bullseye on your back, and those guys to be as consistent as they've been. Um, our seniors are so special. It's as special of a group as I've ever coached. Uh, hopefully I coach for a long, long time, but I know I'll, I'll never coach a group like this one. Just special. Uh, their professionalism, their maturity, uh, their commitment to excellence every single day um, just amaze me and uh, blessed beyond belief. Praise to God for this opportunity uh, to be the head coach and be around young men like these and coach at a world-class institution in a beautiful city. Uh, very, very lucky and blessed. Front row, please. Uh, Andrew Miller with the Post and Courier in Charleston. This is for Ante and Ryan. You know, we knew that you knew guys knew that they were a really good three-point defensive team. What did they do out there that kind of shut that aspect of your game down tonight? Um, I think they just made us uncomfortable shooting three-point shots. Uh, you know, most of them were wide open. We just didn't make shots. I guess you know these games, the shots are not falling as in as they usually do against other teams, but. Uh, I think overall we have to be proud how we played the game, especially in the second half. Um, we all gave our best. We were fighting really hard. It's just those last two minutes, the ball, I guess, didn't bounce our way. They made a couple good plays. We didn't finish the way we wanted to, but um, you know, got to regroup and be ready for the next year. Row three. Ante, what, what is so difficult about trying to stop Matt Bradley off the drive when he gets to the basket? They, they went to that play a lot, um, and he drove and got key, key baskets in, in important moments. And why is that such a challenge? Well, he's just a really good player. You know, that's why he's here. That's why he plays at this stage. And uh, we did a scouting on him. We knew what he's capable of doing. Um, for the bigger part of the game, I think Jalen did a great job, you know, trying to slow him down. We try to give our best to give him help, but you know they just made a couple bigger plays, plays when 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 we, we didn't, and I think that's what separated us from them today. Row three middle, Gene Sapikov from the Charleston Post and Courier. Ryan, could you just talk about the the specialness, if you will, of this team and what this you know one year in Charleston was like for you? Yeah, um, I I can't even put into words. Um, what this team means to me, um, what these coaches, the whole coaching staff means to me. Um, quite frankly, it's probably been the most special basketball season of my life, um, and it's all credit to my teammates and coaches, um, and to just College Charleston as a whole. Um, the the school, the student body, um, just gave us so much support the whole season. Um, I would not trade a single thing for what has happened this year. Um, I absolutely love uh, each and every one of them in the locker room. Front row, please. Uh, Andrew Miller again from the post career. Pat, you, you had a seven-point lead in the first half. What did they What did they do or what did you guys not do that kind of changed the momentum of the game there to close the, sec the first half? Sorry. Yeah, from what I remember, um, 
went on a little bit of a scoring drought, and again, uh, they make it hard to score. You know, I mean, we shot 30% from the field for the game, I believe, 20% from, from three, and we're still right there with a one possession game right there at crunch time. So they're long, they're athletic, they're tough, they're well coached, they're well schooled. Um, you know, and you, you knew going in when you saw the matchup, you, look, you just look at their metrics and their statistics, and they take away threes as good as anybody in the country, and they defend the three point line, hold teams to a, a, as low a percentage as anybody in the country. So we knew we had our work cut out for us. We, you know, we went inside a lot to Ante, um, got us going early, scored the ball, loosened them up a little bit. And, um, you know, it, it, to, to shoot that percentage and still be there at crunch time, I think a tribute to, to one thing, it's, you know, these guys' toughness. The second half, we, and we, were, we were getting our butts kicked physically in the first half, and we never do that, ever. You know, um, we were getting 7% of our misses back, and we're a team that gets 34, 35, something like that. We're top 20 in the country. And they were getting 36% of their misses. And a lot of those were like tips, loose balls, 50-50 balls, ones that we take pride on eating loose balls for breakfast, right? That's what we do. And before I even said anything at halftime, those guys had already addressed it. There's no question. I mean, credit them. They were the better team tonight. They won. Um, in my opinion, we were the tougher, more physical, relentless team in the second half, and that's why we were able to be right there at the end. Row three. Coach, uh, Bryce Miller, San Diego Union Tribune. If you could just follow up on uh, the challenge of defending Bradley with the ball in his hands going to the basket. Yeah, he's good. You know, he, he's, he's good. He's a big, strong, physical kid that can score from distance, can score at the rim, can put foul pressure on you. He's a very, very good all-around player. Um, I, I'm guessing he's all-conference in the, in, in the Mountain West. He's good. You know, they, they have a good scheme that gets him the ball in places where he can be successful. Brian's smart coach. He, he knows what he's doing. And um, kid made some big shots, big moment. Probably a couple that he'll tell her, his grandkids about. Let's take a question from one of our Zoom attendees, Christopher Heidel. Christopher, go ahead and unmute, please. Hey, this is Chris Heidel from Perfect Home Radio in Baltimore. I crashed, uh, sorry for the tough loss today. Uh, what did you take from this ex whole experience, you know, from winning the CAA championship all the way to here? And, what are you guys going to use to bring back the next year to hopefully to pass this, second, this this spot? Well, you know what I told the guys in the locker room is, um, you know, these seniors, although they played their last game in a Charleston uniform, they're gonna they're gonna leave a legacy that's gonna last decades. Just will these seniors led a team that lit our city on fire. Fire. Charleston's been rocking. There's a bounce, there's a vibe on King Street, the arena's packed, and that's because of the leadership and, and what these guys accomplished this year. Um, it's what seniors do. They set, they set the stage, set the tone. And when you have it rolling as a program, uh, when the new group walks in on day one, I have to say less because of the example that Ryan, the senior, set, and then you know the guys like Ante who are, who, who are going into his junior year, and, and the other guys that are older, uh, uh, you know, they let the freshmen know before I even need to how we roll, what we do, what our culture's about, wh what do what we do is, relentless effort, competitive excellence, power of the unit, 25 strong. Um, and, and um, you know, I told the team in the locker room that, you, you know, next year, Ryan Larson's going to burst with pride when we're back here again and we take the next step. Just like John Meeks and Jordan Seachin last year when they come back, and they, they use phrases and say things that is part of our culture. And they took that and they're using it as they move forward in their life. That makes me proud as a coach. You know, well, we're teachers. I'm a teacher. And, and Skip Prosser said, it's a Emerson quote, our chief want in life is someone who can make us do what we can. And I'm not the CEO of the program. I'm the CRO, the chief reminder officer. And it's my job to remind those guys every day what the standard is. But those guys lived up to it and then some. And again, I'm blessed to, to, to have the opportunity to be their coach. First front row, please. Andrew Miller again from the Charleston Post and Courier. Uh, it's for Pat and Ante. Do you, it hurts now, obviously the loss hurts now, but when do you or can you 
in a couple of days here, you know, kind of rise above the trees as a tree line, you say, and appreciate everything that happened this season? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, when it's all said and done and when the emotions, you know, cool down a little bit, I think we have to be really, really proud of what we did last year, this year. Uh, winning so many games, uh, you know, it's just special. The the group of guys that we had, uh, I will never ever forget this season. These guys, these coaches that I had this year, because it means so much to me. And uh, you know, I'm broken the way this ended, because it's you know it's harsh. Because all the everything we did this year came down to this. But uh, you know, it's, it's just how it is. So we gotta bounce back. I know we will because that's what we're all about. And I can't wait for next year. We have one minute remaining. Uh, back row, please. Back row. Uh, Coach, you, you mentioned you know some of the things that San Diego State did to you guys, and you were a very efficient offensive team. Uh, I think it's the 57 points is the lowest you've scored this season. W what can they do in this tournament? Is this the type of team that they can get on a run and, and cause other teams' problems as well? I think so. I think there's no question. I think they're a very, very good team. They're very well coached talented, they're athletic, they're tough, um, disciplined, and they're battle-tested, right? They're an older group, they're experienced, they went through a tough time last year and took the next step today, so I don't see any reason why they can't. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and those will be posted shortly. Thank you for joining us.